<laughs> Are we online yet? Mm -hmm. Where's my mouse? Is it working? Oh, we're online. Hey guys. <laughs> Can you like let's not Hey guys. So, I thought I'd live stream today because I have some editing that I need to get done. Um and I'm editing photos that I took with Fully Raw Christina in the desert in Dubai. And the first thing I'm going to do is go through and select all these photos and then we're going to be editing in Lightroom. So I'll show you my process of editing. Hi. <laughs> all right, I'm going to make sure I needed to post to Twitter to say that the live stream is on. So hold on a sec. I need to charge my phone actually. Instagram. Live streaming and editing session on YouTube. Um, YouTube.com forward slash Julia Trotti. I mean, <laughs> forward slash live. Woo! Add to story. And one more. Come and say hi. Where's the waving emoticon? There. All right, we're back. All right, so I guess I'm just gonna jump straight into it while we wait for people to come. So I've already done a first selection of all the photos cause there was thousands and I didn't wanna bore you to death. So we've got about 356 about we have 356 photos to go through and as you can see these already ha all have one star so the next selection process is going to be two stars and we're basically looking for like the final photos that I want to edit but then depending how many we end up with I'm probably going to do another final selection to end up with like the final final photos that we're going to be editing. So I'll just jump straight into it. And if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to use the chat and I'll respond to anything as best as I can. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going through with my keyboard, just pressing the right key and pressing two stars when I come across something that I really like, such as this photo. I really love uh, Christina's posing in this photo. The sun was still really high up during these, these pictures. Like it was super bright. So the sky is like totally white, but I still like them. <laughs> I feel like in editing, we can do something really cool with them. Q 
Can you hear the music in the background? Is it too loud? <laughs> I have Dan quietly sitting next to me. I feel like I like one of these too. Hmm, probably this one. I don't know, I guess when I'm looking for a good photo, I love looking at the overall composition of the photo. <coughs> I like to make sure that the background's looking good. And then I like to make sure that Christina looks good. I love it when the skirt is flying up in the shot. I think that looks really cool. And her hair as well. She's got super long hair, so it looks awesome when the wind blows and it's like flying everywhere. I mean, that's probably a bit too much, but like something like these look really cool. Out of these two, I pick this one. Just because I think the skirt looks better, so. And I give Christina, I think she just fell down the sand dune in that, in that photo there. I give props to Christina because this day it was so windy in the sand dunes and all the little particles of sand were just flying into our faces and she's looking so like ethereal and calm and happy and we were both just like screaming and laughing our heads off because the conditions were just super harsh to shoot in that day and not to mention it was incredibly hot i think it was like 40 degrees celsius it was crazy oh got a little man in the background it's a shame because i really like that photo mm, maybe i'll include it see what we can do that might be interesting actually would you like to see me remove the man? I mean, he's only against like the white backdrop, so maybe it's not that interesting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the dream. It really is a dream, getting to, to travel to amazing locations to take photos. I love it and really, really appreciate it. Oh, there he is again. <laughs> He's just like watching us. That's creepy. These photos are okay. I think I prefer the portrait ones though. I might include one. Landscape photos come in handy for like my blog because I use it in my blog header and a landscape photo is really good. Maybe there's better ones. I like that one because she's kicking up sand. That looks cool. Oh, that one's nice too with the skirt. Oh. Sometimes when I'm going through photos, like I'll see the first one in a series like this one and I'll star it, but then I go to the next one and it's even better. So I have to go back and de-star the first one and star the second one. Oh, I like that one too. Oh, and there's me and Christina. You can see just how windy it was. <laughs> I'm also really surprised that all these photos are in focus because, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but if you travel with a DSLR and you're normally taking like landscape photos or photos of your friends or whoever, and then like a stranger comes up and they're like, do you guys want a photo together? And you're like, yeah, sure. But you don't have much confidence that they're going to get it because it's always out of focus. So I'm surprised that, they, that these are sharp. Oh, and there's Yusuf. <laughs> he was our driver. He took us around in the sand dunes. He was a really nice guy. He was also really, really crazy when he was driving. Um, so he said that he grew up in the sand dunes area of Dubai. Like, that's his home. And he loves to drift. Like, that's all he was saying all day. He's like, my passion is to drive in the sand dunes and I love drifting. Um, and so when we were driving, he was going maybe like, 110 kilometers per hour like I'm not even exaggerating he was going that fast in the sand dunes um and he'd like get to the peak of one of the dunes and to the right side there was just this massive drop and he'd be just drifting on the peak of the dune it was terrifying we were like screaming our heads off I was vlogging the whole time too so those videos will come out really soon um at the moment Hawaii is still getting posted 
Um, and after that, I have Argentina vlogs, which I'm so excited to post. I'm still editing them, actually. And then we'll be Dubai. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your name right. Angkor? I just realized that I made a mistake in my Instagram story. So I need to delete it and repost it. My bad. All right, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> um, editing live on YouTube right now. Um, but if you go to my page, sorry, I'm just like talking to Dan for a second, who's just here next to me. If you go to my page, um, what is what happens if you just go to youtube.com forward slash Laura? Mm -hmm. That works too? Okay, I posted the wrong link the first time to my Instagram story. Whoopsie. And one more. And I'm back. <laughs> oh, yay, I pronounced it right. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was talking about. Anyway. I really love these photos that we took with the sand. We were sort of, um, this day at the sand dunes, we sort of booked a, a normal tour to the dunes. And so the tour included that drive through the sand dunes, which lasted about, mm, I'd say like 40 minutes, where Yusuf was like drifting through the sand dunes and we were screaming our heads off. Um, but then afterwards, ooh, I love the way the sand's moving here. That's so pretty. Um, but then afterwards, they drop you off at this campsite. It's, like, really pretty, and there's, like, a stage and heaps of shops, and um, they sort of drop you off there at maybe, like, 4 o'clock, and sunset's not till 6, and we were kind of like, oh, we don't really want to be here the whole time. So we decided to go off for a walk, and that's where we walked to, like, the sand dunes that were close to the um, to the little camping area, and we wanted to take photos but there are so many cars driving around, so it seemed kind of dangerous and we didn't want to venture off too far. And we were just taking photos and eventually we just see Yusuf pull up in his car and we're like, oh, hey, <laughs> like, what are you doing here? And um, he's like, oh, I don't want to interrupt you because I know you came here to like enjoy the scenery and you don't want me to be around. And we're like, no, 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 like come and keep us company. We love it. And um, so he, we were like showing him the photos that we were taking and stuff and he really liked them. And he's like, oh, you want to go for a drive? So, um, so we hopped in the car and he was like drifting and he took us to this amazing spot, which I love because it's just totally untouched. So you have all the patterns of the, of the desert and we had like this cool peak. So for these photos here, I told Christina to walk in like the straightest line she could, like make as, as little footprints as you possibly can getting to that peak. Uh, so that's what we did. <laughs> we just kind of stopped halfway through for a couple of pose photos and then she continued walking. Oh, I like that where you can see all the sand getting kicked up. But yeah, I'm just like talking and going through these photos. Um, I don't know if you can notice here on the left side, but the one stars were the ones that were already selected. And then if you see a two, that's because I gave it a second star and that's the selection I'm making right now if that makes sense. And there she is at the peak. Oh, I like that one better. And then, so here I'm taking a photo standing up um, and I sort of felt like it wasn't mm, like dramatic enough. So I bent down so Christina was in the horizon line so she'd stand out more in the photo. 
And I think it looks a little better that way. And some landscape photos, because you always need some of those. You know, I even like photos like this where the posing's a little bit more awkward. That's sort of like my style of, <laughs> of photography. So I like to include those as well. And then Christina has super long hair, so we always do hair flick photos, which I think look really cool in this location. I find that sometimes, I don't know if you can tell, how do I zoom in? Whoa. But photos in the, um, in the Canon are like a tiny bit soft. Like, I feel like she's a little bit soft. I don't know, but I really like that photo. I'll just include it. I think she fell down here, but it actually made a really cool photo when she did. Graceful falling. I like this one with the plane in the background. It looks cool. Yeah, it feels like I was in Dubai so long ago because we went to um to Lebanon straight after as well. And I think I got back home maybe a week ago. Um, but our time in Lebanon, it was only it was the same amount of time as Dubai. So we spent a week in Dubai and Lebanon. But I feel like we just did so much in Lebanon that it felt like we were there for, for months. It was amazing. I loved it there so much. <clears throat> but um, yeah, because of that, and then also I've been home for a week and it's been really crazy. Like this weekend, Dan and I went down to the Hunter Valley and we hired a little Airbnb cottage um, that we stayed at and it was really nice. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I really like some of these photos. I think we were like literally just laughing about something stupid, but she looks so happy. And I feel like it really makes the photo like shine. <laughs> I like it. Ooh, and then we took some really silhouetted sunset photos because in these photos, you still can't see the sky that much. It's still a little bit overexposed. So I wanted to do some really like dark shots, which I think turned out pretty nice. And Christina already posted one of these photos to her Instagram. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was this one. So I might not edit any more of those because they're all pretty similar. And then these were the last shots of the day, I believe, where, yeah, because we've already made like heaps of footprints on the floor. So those are Christina's. And then I was trying to stand in her footprints, but I think I got a little bit sidetracked. And then Yusuf came and was keeping us company. So there was a lot of footprints at that point. And we just decided to get a few more shots of her just like walking back. The sun had nearly set at that point. And in Dubai, I don't know what it is, maybe like the construction or something, but the horizon is always so, so hazy, like every day. And you never really get like a vibrant sunset there because it's always diffused by the haze from, I don't know what it is, the construction or the desert, who knows. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of all my one stars i'm going to put them back in the deselex folder and these are all the photos we're left with which is 127 photos so i think i'm going to go through and select my favorite favorite ones to edit and 
Hey Kung! <laughs> Thanks for joining. I'm gonna press play on the record. We're listening to the Polish Club on vinyl, by the way, which is our latest favorite brand. And Kung actually got the vinyl for us, so thank you. It's been playing in the office like nonstop ever since it arrived. It's like the best. Okay, so the first selection of photos, I gave it one stars. And now the second selection of photos, I gave it two. And now for the final selection of photos, I'm gonna give it three stars. You can give it up to like five stars and then you can do colored labels, but no one really uses those. Well, at least I don't anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go through and pick which photos I'm going to be editing now. So I, I don't know, I like this photo and I feel like it kind of tells a story, but that's probably more of a photo for my blog. Like I don't see Christina posting this on her Instagram cause it's sort of like, like more of an in-between photo, I guess. So I'm not going to include that. Out of these, I love this one. Like her pose is awesome. So I'll include that. And then from these far away ones, I really like this because her hair is really voluminous. Hi, 95. Of these, I like this one because her hair looks really cool and the skirt's flying in the wind. I'll include that. And I like that one as well. And these sitting ones, I love these, especially this one. It's so beautiful. I like this. I really love this photo. I wish that man wasn't standing there. He's so creepy. Go away. I'll make him disappear with Photoshop. <laughs> oh, I'm really cold. I'm going to close the window. I'm back. And I really like this one. Oh, I already stopped it. And out of these landscape ones, I really love this one with her arms out and this one. Oh, no, this one. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'll include this one. And then out of these, I love this and this one and this one. And then I think I'll include some landscapes because I like them for my blog. <laughs> That one's really cool. I, I love the way like the sand has depth of field in it, especially these ones with like a bit of motion blur. That's getting included. And then I think this one and this one too. I like that her eyes are closed in the back. I feel like it looks more dramatic, I guess. And in editing, I'd probably crop it in like right there. So it'll look a lot better later. I love this photo. It looks really cool. Uh, is Lightroom better than Photoshop for editing photos? Um, well, they're both used for different things. So I like to use Lightroom because I edit, um, like I do batch editing where I edit a lot of photos in one go. And I feel like it handles raw files better. Um, we're going to get into Lightroom in a minute because I'm almost done with the selecting and I'll show you sort of how it works. Um, Photoshop, personally, I like to use Photoshop if I'm editing a f like a one-off photo and I want to put a little bit more effort into it. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think it comes down to personal preference. So for me, I prefer editing photos in Lightroom, definitely. Um, but yeah, and then sometimes I like to add a few final touches in Photoshop that I can't do in Lightroom. And also Photoshop is awesome for like that creepy man in the background. Awesome for removing people like that. In Lightroom, you can remove little things, but you can't remove like people and, you know, something that has a lot of detail in the background. You'd need Photoshop for that. I don't know 
which one I like better? Probably this one. I like all of these, so I'm including all of them. Cool, all right, I'm done. So now I'm gonna get rid of all the two stars and all we're left with are the three star photos. Yay! So we have 61 of them. I think that we can work with that. That's okay, I hope I explained it properly. Um, but yeah, getting into Lightroom now, so I'll be able to show you. So we're going to import the three star photos that we just selected. Look how huge my Dropbox folder is. Yikes. Anyway, <laughs> mm, Dubai photos, day five selects. There's our photos, import. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but when I'm editing photos, I don't like to start on the first one. I sort of go through and start somewhere in the middle. Usually, I actually like to start on the second outfit usually, so we'll just do that. So I'm going to go into develop. And the first thing I do when I'm editing, so with Christina, I don't actually use any presets. I just edit them on the go. She likes her photos to be really like colorful and vibrant, which I know means the same thing, but I can't, <laughs> can't think of any other words. And like contrasty, so I just edit them from scratch because I feel like that works better. So I'm going to sharpen the hell out of it. I always just make this pattern with my with my sharpening tool. I love the um the sharpness it gives. There's a before and after. Before, after. It just like brings out so many details, like in the necklace and her bracelets and her face and her hair. I love it. <laughs> I'm all about the sharpening. Okay. And then I am going to bring up the exposure a little bit. She's kind of dark. Bring up the shadows to bring her up a little bit. Then I'm going to bring up the contrast. And it's going to look a bit dodge until I like finish. So bear with me. And then bring the highlights down, which isn't doing anything. And bring the blacks down. And that's going to give a lot of nice contrast to the photo. There's a before and after. So that's before and that's after. And I feel like when I edit um, photos that are sort of minimal in terms of background. So um, for example, if I was shooting against like a tree and it was like green and there was like a lot of dark um, patches and stuff in the photo, it, this wouldn't bother me so much. But when I'm shooting somewhere that's uh, lighter in color, so for example here with the sand dunes, the vignetting, of my 35 mil lens uh really bothers me so to fix that i'm gonna go down to lens correction and enable profile correction and i just let lightroom do this automatically because it it um you can do it manually as well but i mean if you've got a electronic lens on you may as well just do it automatically so it um it picks what camera you shot it on picks the lens that you shot it on which is correct it's the canon 35 1.4 l series lens and the profile which is the same thing as the lens because lenses don't really have profiles um yeah so as you can see it just gets rid of those dark shadows down there and i feel like in a light photo that really stands out and it just looks so much cleaner <laughs> without that All right, and then normally I turn up the vibrance and saturation, but I think that's just going to make her skin look really orange. So I don't know if that's that's going to be a good idea. Maybe I'll turn down the orange saturation. The problem with this is that um, like in Lightroom's terms, her skin and the sand dunes are like the same color. It's in the orange yellow spectrum. So if I want to make the sand dunes more vibrant, her skin tone is going to get more vibrant too, which we don't want. So it's a bit tricky to sort of balance that out. But yeah, with skin, um, to make it look a little, to make um, your subject stand out a little bit more, I always bring up the luminance by about 10. 
So you can see there, her skin tone gets a bit lighter, so she stands out in the photo a little bit more. And I brought down the yellows a little bit as well, so the sand dunes are a little bit more defined. And then in saturation, pretty much the only color we have is in her top. So I'm gonna try bringing that up with, nope, it's not magenta. Purple, red, red, I guess. It makes it look more um, more red than it is. It's like actually a pink top. <laughs> and then maybe the greens as well for her skirt. That's not really doing anything. Okay, I don't like the top that bright either. Okay, <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm just mumbling to myself. Again, if you have any questions, please ask because that will give me something to talk about and I'll stop mumbling to myself. So there's a before and after. I'm pretty happy with how that looks, actually. Just wish I could make something more vibrant. Oh, there we go. Sand dunes look a little bit more golden. I like that. Okay. And then basically, once I have the initial edit for the first photo down, I sync it with the rest of the photos and then that's sort of my base for editing everything all right so now let's go back to the first one and this one is way too bright so I'm going to bring down the exposure and also crop it in a little bit that's too far away And here, the yellow of the sand doesn't look that nice. So I'm going to bring up the luminance of that again. Maybe I can play around with the hue. Green sand dunes. But yeah, you can really see the difference from... This was the sand dunes right near the camp. And there's just like footprints everywhere. And then these are the sand dunes that the driver took us to. And it just, it's so pretty. Oh, I love it. I love Dubai so much. If I go back, I would probably go back like on a layover or something. And I would go straight to the sand dunes because it was amazing. All right. So now that I tweak this one a little bit, I'm going to sync it with the photo next to it. And that should look a little better. I feel like there's too many, too many shadows, but it's just because of the footprints driving me crazy. <laughs> I wish I could like tint the sky, maybe with curves. Make it a little bit yellow. Maybe a little bit red, actually, might be cool. Mm, too much. Well, I feel like that gives it something. It's a little more interesting. I feel like it's too much yellow. Yeah, I feel like that helps the photo a little bit. Because otherwise the sky is too stark. Like it's just so white and that's all you see. Whereas this way, um, I basically just brought down the white point of the photo. So you can see what it does when I do it like to the extreme. It's like the, f the fade option on Instagram when you edit a photo. Just like matting the whites a little bit. And now these, again, I feel like the yellow is too, it's like not golden enough. There we go. Oh, I was like, what is that behind her? It's just a bush. <laughs> I thought it was sand or something. That really confused me. Oh, I'm going to sync that last photo again. 
And as before and after. I think that looks nice. I'm happy with that. It's not super colorful, but I mean, there's no color in the photos, so I can't really do anything about that. I really love these portraits. This one, I love this. Dance back. Oh, where's my mouse? Bye. Do you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> yeah, because I synced the original edit from this photo to all the photos, um, basically all I do is hover my mouse over like the exposure or the, the highlights or the shadows and use the up and down arrows to um, tweak them a bit. And I brought down the the temperature of the photo too. I don't know if I like that better. Probably a little too much. Maybe put this on like 12. I think I'm happy with that for these portraits. And also it's like really crooked. I have a problem. I take really, really crooked photos sometimes and I spend a lot of time fixing them up. That's better. But yeah, I feel like it's really important um, to not forget to look at the little details when you're editing a photo because I sometimes I do that as well. Um, but I've learned over the years all the things to look out for. And like sometimes you get like so carried away looking at like the model that you're shooting and making sure like her facial expression is perfect or this is perfect and that. And then you don't realize there's like a massive piece of rubbish behind her or the the landscape is like 45 degrees <laughs> on the wrong angle. I feel like this will look better a bit cropped in as well. Less sky, more sand. Maybe on like the thirds though. I might brighten up just her face like a tiny bit. I'm gonna use the adjustment brush for this. And I've got the exposure at plus 20. And pull down the blacks a little bit as well. There we go. And maybe the exposure down now actually. It's very bright overall. Uh, yes, actually, my photos do look different on my phone than my computer. I was actually talking to Dan about this like two days ago. Um, I can't even remember what we were saying, but something to do with, um, well, I guess your screens would be calibrated differently from your phone to your computer, as well as like, you know, when you shoot a picture and you look at it on the back of your camera and... I don't know, sometimes you can really love a picture when you see it in the back of the camera, but then when you download it and see it on your computer, like when it's bigger and there's more detail, you kind of don't love it as much and you find a different one that you love instead. I don't know if screen size might have something to do with why photos look so different. Um, but yeah, I find that my photos look different as well. And even if I could edit my picture to be like perfect in Lightroom, um, when I import it to my phone to post to Instagram, I still have to do like minor editing, like contrast a little bit or the highlights a little bit or change the colors a tiny bit. Like I always have to do something to my photo when I when I see it on my phone. So you're not the only one <laughs> experiencing that. Here we have the creepy man photo. I know I really like this portrait of Christina, so I'm sticking. I'm keeping it around. I mean, I wonder if you could get rid of it with um with Lightroom. Let's try. <laughs> Just have like the biggest brush. All right, bye. No, nah, that doesn't work. <laughs> I tried. What if I align that? I mean, that's kind of dodge, but it kind of worked. I actually no, that's not that bad. The more I look at it, let's try and get rid of that car as well. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh. Yeah, no, that one's bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually impressed that Lightroom got rid of that guy. I'll do the car in, um, in Photoshop there. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I was saying, looking out for little things in photos is just as important as looking at the main part of the photo. <laughs> I mean, I guess I kind of covered it before, but anyway. <laughs> Um, I like the way these look. Maybe the sand dunes can be a little more, a little more orange. Yes. I feel like every single photo I took is from a different angle. And it's pretty much just because I was kind of falling <laughs> all over the place. I was like, I was standing right here on this, on this section. So I would like step somewhere and the sand would just move from underneath me and I'd slowly be like shooting and sliding down <laughs> the hill at the same time. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not the only one. I know, I think that too. And like sometimes um, like I'll open up a photo to post to Instagram and I'm like, why, <laughs> why did I edit it so badly in Lightroom? Like I should have done a better job. But no, it's, n it's not you. It's literally the difference in, in screens. So these I'm going to edit a little brighter like this um, just because she's in focus in the photo. And then I think the ones where it's a close up on her hands, I'll edit to be a little darker just so you can see the grains of sand a little bit better. I was about to say grains of salt. It's definitely not salt. <laughs> All right, these need a lot of cropping. <laughs> But that looks a lot better. I like to try and keep the rules of thirds in mind when I'm cropping. I like to have my, my subject in the center of a photo. Um, but then everything else, I like to try and keep in like the rule of thirds. And this one, because the hands are in focus, I'm just making it a little bit darker and upping the contrast a little bit. I'm gonna press play on the record. Maybe I'll flip it actually. Look how cool this record is though. It's half red, half white. I'm back. Um, if you're new to Lightroom, I don't really watch that many, uh, like tutorial channels. The only one that I really love is Flern, uh, P H L E R N. Um, I don't, I don't know if you'll have a beginner's Lightroom tutorial, but you should check. Cause I really love the way he teaches and I love the way he talks and the way he explains things and the way his videos are made. Um, so his is a really good channel if you haven't heard of it already. But yeah, Lightroom, it seems quite daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really quite um, simple and 
it's just, I don't know, I couldn't live without Lightroom. <laughs> I feel like, because um, I used to be the same. I used to edit all my photos in Photoshop when I started photography. Um, and then one day my dad, he, there was like a, like a free seminar in the city and he booked us in for it. And it was with a, um, a lady called Julianne Cost. And she was a developer for Lightroom and she was doing this, um, this seminar. So we like woke up super early, caught the train to the city and went to the seminar and it like changed my life <laughs> when she was showing us how to use Lightroom. And when I saw like how powerful it is and how much you can do with it, I went home and I got Lightroom that same day and just started um, basically just like Googling things and remembering what she said from from the seminar and just started using it and never turned back. Like I love Lightroom, it's the best. I feel like this one needs like something. Maybe the cropping. Maybe it needs to be like really, really close up. No. <laughs> I feel like here I could use the saturation a little bit more with the blues. And maybe clarity as well. Bring out those greens. Oh, the sand looks like so yellow. Maybe a little less pinks and maybe a little less on the orange. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, also a really cool shortcut for Lightroom is the backslash button. And when you're in the develop module, um, you press the backslash and it shows you a before of the photo. So good. All right, I that, think that's good. I'm gonna sync these two as well because they're similar with the, with the sand. Yes, I love it. I feel like because of the shutters, you're kind of losing that section. There we go. That's better. <coughs> oh, I feel like I sound really Aussie sometimes. <laughs> That's better. You can see all the detail in the sand now. Because, I don't know, when the shutters were up, I feel like the before image, you could see more green than the after. So it looks much better with the off. But yeah, I'm struggling with this, like, it's this weird yellow tone. I really want to get rid of it for this one because I love these photos. Maybe it's just the saturation. Sorry if I'm like leaning over. I have a little screen here with the chat and it's so tiny. I can't, I can't see it from here. Um, yeah, so with these shoots, uh, this girl is Fully Raw Christina and she's a social influencer. She like has a Fully Raw vegan diet and she has a massive following online and super like successful and just awesome at what she does. She's like a girl boss. I love it. Um, and basically she hires me to like shoot for her for like her social media. Um, and so this jewelry and like her clothes and everything she's got a stylist that she works with and someone makes her that jewelry i think it's her sister um no her sister's 
Well, someone in her family <laughs> makes her the jewelry, and so she's got a lot of it and always wears it in her shoots because she, like I said before, loves photos to be super colorful and full of personality. And um, yeah, I don't know. I love it, and I agree that it adds a lot of um, it adds a little bit of something to the photo because. I don't know, in my personal, like, fashion shoots, I don't really style jewelry that much. Um, I'm more focused, I guess, on the clothes and the location and, like, the feeling of the photo. Uh, so it's a little different to work with Christina, but I love it so much. I think I'm happy with that. I think it looks pretty cool. I don't know, I can't decide if I like the, the color tone of the orange and yellow. Maybe I'll play around with it a little bit more. Uh, and yeah, I definitely prefer shooting raw just because there is so much more information in the photo to work with. So for example, see these, um, like this sand here in the background with a raw image, you can bring back the highlights and like the whites to save all that. There's still information in the photo to do that. But if you were to shoot in JPEG, you wouldn't be able to do that. Like it would stay pretty white or do that weird like banding when you bring down the, the exposure. Um, so yeah, I always shoot raw and yeah, it takes up a lot of space and yes, I have a lot of hard drives, but um, it's definitely worth it because you can see it in the quality when you're, when you're editing. And it's also definitely saved my ass like a lot of times when I accidentally take, um, especially when I used to shoot weddings, like you'd take a photo of like something that will never happen again, like a hug between someone or like the flower girl laughing or something. And usually at weddings, like moments happen in a split second. So you don't have a lot of time to change your settings. And sometimes you'd capture that moment and the photo would be like a bit underexposed or a bit overexposed. And then with raw, you don't have to worry too much because you can just uh, save it in the editing. So. I always shoot raw. All right, I think finally I'm happy with these photos. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that coloring. I think this one's definitely the winner. The photo in the middle, I love it. All right, <laughs> sometimes I get really carried away and end up spending way too much time on a photo. Hey Daniel from Argentina, I was just there and I, oh, I want to go back. <laughs> I love Argentina. Whereabouts in Argentina are you? My, I went to, to uh, well, two weeks, no, three, three or four weeks ago I was in Argentina and my family is from Mar del Plata. So we were there for two weeks and then we spent a couple of days in Buenos Aires as well. But I love Argentina so much. I want to go back really soon. I, I'm going to take Dan next time as well. And we're going to travel like the countryside. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, well, getting this job with Christina, how do I explain it? I feel like I've a lot of the jobs that I've gotten in the industry was through recommendations. So like I didn't really get it at first when I started photography and everyone's like connections are everything. You need connections. You need to talk to people. You need people to know you. And I was like, yeah, all right. Like I don't really want to go to like fashion parties and like talk to people. I'm like, that's not what I do. Um, but then slowly over the years, you start realizing what that means. And basically when I started fashion photography, I did a lot of test shoots, which are free shoots between the photographer, a model, a makeup artist, a stylist, whoever else wants to come on board. Everyone just works for free and you do a shoot for a few hours and everyone gets some pictures out of it that they, they can use in their portfolio. So I did test shoots for like a couple of years and I still do them now every now and again. Um, but basically everyone that I met on those test shoots, I made sure to talk to them about 
what I love in photography and what sort of photographer I wanted to be. So I'd always mention that like, oh, I love shooting like on location lookbooks and I love shooting campaigns and like I want to create a campaign with you next time on a shoot that looks like like, I don't know, like a planet blue campaign or something. And like saying all these little things to people gets them to sort of realize <coughs> um, like that you really know what you want to do. And so maybe then they will be talking to someone that owns a fashion um, brand and that person is looking for someone to photograph their brand and they're like, oh, I really want to do an outdoor shoot, but I don't know who to get. And then maybe the makeup artist who you were talking to, it will like click in her head like, oh, Julia said that she loves shooting outdoor campaigns. Why don't you look at her work? And from there, you've like made this connection. So working with Christina was really through connections and that's every job that I've gotten is like that. So I finally understand <laughs> connections are important. I hope that makes sense. If you have any more questions, ask away. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to bring down the highlights for these photos. Because the sky is really blown out. Ooh, I like that. So when I'm using curves, like I mentioned before, I bring down the highlight point here. And bringing it down from the top right-hand corner um, basically mats the whitest whites in the photo. Um, and then with the blue curve, bringing it down this way brings takes out the yellow the sorry it takes out the blues from the highlights so it makes it more yellow and then with the greens bring it pulling it down removes the greens from the highlights thus making it more red you could also do it the other way just use the red um highlights and bring it out this way but um i don't know i feel like it's too harsh doing it that way like i know i'm going extreme but um yeah it's a bit too harsh for my liking so i do it the other way which is like the opposite way. But I feel like that looks nice. Maybe more contrast. I love contrast. <laughs> All right, let's try syncing that to like the first few and see what it looks like. Sometimes I can't fully commit to an edit. <laughs> like I'll just copy it to a first, a first, I'll just copy it to the first view. And then by the time I get to the last one, I feel like I would have decided if I like it or not. And then you get like a harsh look at what your original edit was. I don't know. It's just what I like to do. I totally get what you mean about being introverted because I, I, even if it might not seem like it, I am as well. Um, and I'm definitely a lot more outgoing now than I was before. So when I first started photography, I was super, super shy and I was really, really quiet on shoots. But um, uh, for me personally, I feel like doing photography is something that made me happy. So when I was at a shoot, I was so excited that I had put together this shoot and we were gonna take like the photos that I've always wanted to take like of that shoot that it kind of, help me be a little more confident and I don't know sometimes before shoots and it even still happens now I get so so scared that like my stomach will hurt or I'll be driving to the shoot and I'm like trembling or I just like have to force myself with all my might not to call up and just cancel last minute because I can't take how nervous it makes me feel like that still happens to me today and I've been doing this for about like seven years now <laughs> Um, so like, that's not to say that like, it's never going to go away because for me, as soon as I get there and I like say hi to everyone that's part of the shoot, it sort of starts melting away. And the more I like start like talking a little bit and getting to know who I'm working with and talking about what I want to do. And then when I start shooting, especially it's like the whole world just disappears 
and like that's all that's happening right now and nothing else really matters cue Metallica <laughs> um but yeah I I was super shy as well but I feel like um if you just get like start getting into it and maybe you find like a makeup artist that you really like to work with um or a model that you become friends with and then you can um continually continuously <laughs> plan shoots with them every now and then and it sort of feels like you're just reuniting with old friends because I definitely have that in the industry now I've got um my makeup artist Lydia who I love um and we always do shoots together so that always makes me less nervous when I know someone um at the shoot <laughs> if that makes sense so I guess it's all about um like experience like the more you do it the more confident you'll feel the more people you'll know you'll start working with the same people again um yeah hopefully that's some good advice I don't know <laughs> With cropping, sometimes I hate it when there's like, <laughs> for example, here, like a tiny bit of grass right on the edge of the photo and I can't help, but I, I like need to crop it out. But that looks a lot better. Yes. And I definitely like having the highlights brought down as well. It just, it gives the photo a bit of a filmic vibe. So hopefully Christina will like it, but um, I feel like it just, it ties it in so well. It like, makes all the elements come together rather than there being like this beautiful sand dune and then just a white sky and also because the sun was so bright it creates like this weird i don't know if you can see it like a white like oval shape but when you mat it you can't see it as much like there you can see it it's super harsh but that, that looks better yay There's that shrub in the edge of the photo. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. These are the camel farms. So people in Dubai have properties on in the desert and there'll be like nothing for like ages. And then all of a sudden there's just like a camel farm. <laughs> so random. I don't know if it's because it fills more of the frame up, but I feel like I like to edit landscape photos to be really dark. Like I like these look cool, really bright, but this one I like really, really dark. The highlights isn't really doing that much past that point I'll leave it there I think I posted this photo to my Instagram did I no it's different it's like ever slow oh slightly different <laughs> Um, I'm not really that influenced by photographers per se. Like I like looking at, um, like photography and I, especially on Instagram love, oh, sorry, <laughs> one second. Um, I love looking at what well, I follow a lot of feature accounts, mostly because they post a lot of different photographers work and I feel like you get a cool, um, like a different array of photos to look at. So I, I like doing that. Um, when I got into photography, my biggest inspiration was Lara Jade at the time. I had found her when she was posting on DeviantArt when she, I don't know if anyone um, like goes this far back. <laughs> I'm like going into the time machine now. But um, 
she posted photos. She'd like take photos of models in like really like awkward, like broken doll like positions. And she'd add like birds in her photos and texture and stuff like that. And I found that on, ins- on DeviantArt and it was like the most inspiring thing to me. I loved it. So I wanted to do the same thing. And yeah, so sh- I guess I kind of started getting into photography because of her. Like I just loved her work. Um, and then another big one is Tim Walker. And he does really like fairy tale esque photo shoots, and he sets up a lot of um, um, like he sets up his sets. Like they've got massive props, and like the models look like I don't know. They they look amazing. <laughs> I have like this massive Tim Walker book. It's like it's bigger than A4 size. It's huge and so heavy and really thick, and it's just like beautiful full page prints of his work and it's like my biggest go-to inspiration when I'm feeling like like I'm stuck for ideas I feel like in every few photos the sand gets like more weird of a color I don't know why so yeah those are my like my two at least when I started my two biggest inspirations in photography. Um, I also really love what Lara Jade is doing now. I don't follow her so much, but I have her uh, her Facebook page liked. So she comes up in my feed every now and then. And she's like um, another girl boss, <laughs> like just doing awesome at her thing, which I really love. Um, but yeah, I don't follow her work as much now. At the moment, I don't know. My ins- I get really inspired by locations, by models by personalities by someone's enthusiasm for a shoot i get inspired by clothing sometimes makeup um yeah i don't know i feel like i've i've gotten to a point where like i found what i like to shoot and i found my reason to shoot that i yeah i like getting inspired by places and things rather than other people's work if that makes sense Yeah, I don't know. I still follow accounts on Instagram though because it's nice to see other photographers do their work. Oh, and I really love um, Blee Blue on Instagram as well. He's got some of the most creative portraits ever. I love them. You should check him out if you haven't already. Yeah, I feel like the thing with shooting at sunset is that the light changes so drastically from minute to minute that you kind of need to edit every photo differently. I'll sync it up to there. Committing a little bit more this time. Uh, the crop thing is I let me find one to crop oh come on I shoot crooked all the time and now I can't find a crooked photo okay wait how about this one uh, so for cropping you can either press this little grid button up here and it brings up the grid or I use the shortcut R and that brings up the grid as well and then if you drag in the corners it makes the crop smaller or bigger. And then you can also, as you're dragging, drag it down and it turns it into a landscape crop. And then if you hold your mouse outside the grid, you can see like that little bendy arrow and you can do the the leveling thing, (laughs) the cropping thing, the leveling thing. I am so great at talking. Um, And then here you can also change the aspect ratio so I shoot at two by three in my on my Canon camera, so that's what it's on. And then for Instagram, I think it's like five by seven or five by seven or eight by ten, four by five. I think it's that one. 
Uh, yeah, so you can change the aspect ratio as well, but I always just leave it um, at two by three or just original. Yeah, and then you press enter when you're done. So what was I up to? Mm, this one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you almost got it correct. Blee blue is B L double E B L U. Hi, in Germany. That's so cool. I've been to Germany once. Dan and I went to Berlin for 12 hours. We were in Szczecin in Poland. Uh, we were visiting some of Dan's family. And um, I think we were there for like five days in Szczecin. And we didn't realize how like the train ride from Szczecin to Berlin was only like an hour. So we bought tickets and we went and it was amazing. I'm kind of bummed though because at the end of the day when we were heading back to the train station it was like becoming dusk and that's where it seemed like everything was starting to happen and we were like no we're leaving when like the city's coming to life so I need to go back one day. But yeah, Blee Blue's work is awesome. There's like so much emotion in it and the poses that he gets his models into are like crazy sometimes. Like I love it. And um, it's very, very different from my work though. But um, yeah, I follow him. You're welcome. It's funny the things that you don't notice on the day as well while you're shooting. Like I just noticed now that the sand dunes have like dead leaves or something here. Kind of wish I noticed that on the day. I don't know, it's so easy to like get swept up in in a moment that um I don't know, sometimes you don't notice little things here and there. Or like you're concentrating so hard on like getting <laughs> like a perfect photo that like even sometimes something really obvious like that creepy man in the background you just like don't realize that for a second no it's funny it's just like the more you do something the more you learn and i feel like um even though i've been doing it for years i'm still learning a lot of things but I guess, I don't know, there was like a quote somewhere. I can't remember how it goes exactly. But it's like, um, if you're not learning, you're not growing. So I guess it's a good thing. <laughs> See, and the lighting changed like so drastically from that one to that one as well. And the sun is like in the same spot. What even? All right, I'm going to sink these. Yay, someone from Poland. Hey, I love Poland. My boyfriend's Polish. I don't know if you were here while I was talking about it. But um, yeah, I love Poland. <laughs> uh, and yes, Dubai was a work trip. A really damn awesome work trip. <laughs> I feel like this photo is a little bit soft. Yes, it is. I mean, it's still nice though, so I'm gonna keep it. Oh, there's some like chromatic abrasion going on in her hair. I wonder if I can fix that. Manual. No, it's still there. Oh, there it goes. Yay. Did that happen to any others? Oh, like a tiny bit. I think it's fine. It was just that one that it was like really prominent.
Uh, this photo is kind of random, but I like it. <laughs> I like the pattern of the sand. I feel like we were running out of light so quickly that day. Like, oh, it's, I don't know, in Dubai, like, it's just, we had to wake up at sunrise and we'd shoot until about 9, sometimes 10 a.m. Because after that, it gets ridiculously hot. Like, so hot. You stand out in the sun and it feels like you're in an oven. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And then, so we couldn't really shoot again until the afternoon, until about, like, 4. Um, so then, I don't know, you start shooting and then it's, like, sunset all of a sudden and the sun's, like, because it's lost in that haze in the landscape, it kind of disappears really quickly. It's, like, bright, 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 and then just dark. It's really weird. It was, like... It was strange working in really different conditions because, I don't know, I'm used to shooting in harsh light in Australia, especially in the summer. It's autumn going into winter right now here, and I adore the lighting at like during this time of year because it's just, um, it's quite soft the whole day, but in summer, it's so harsh. Like, you definitely cannot shoot anywhere between like 11 a.m. till about 3 or 4 p.m. So it was similar to Dubai, but we don't have that extreme heat like they did there. Hmm? <laughs> 6 p.m. here. Yeah. I mean, what time does the sunset here in summer? Uh, I feel like these could be cropped in a little bit. Whoop. I don't know what rules of thirds I'm following here, but there we go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's better cropped in a little bit. Oh, there's like a little bush here in the corner get rid of it there we go dance back Um, yeah. So when I started doing photography, well, basically I started um, when I was in high school. So I, that's when I sort of started um, getting into photography. Like I, I started um, practicing and realizing that I really loved it. Um, and then as I was finishing high school, I wasn't really sure what to study and eventually decided to study photography. Uh, and while I was doing that, I decided to get a job at a photography studio. And I worked there for about uh, two or three years, I think. Um, and while I was there, I learned a lot about um, like the whole business side of thing with uh, photography. Cause my, I don't know, my uni course wasn't uh, really what I was expecting kind of wish I had a little more guidance when I was in high school from the careers counselor because I, don't, I feel like she didn't really know what to tell me because I guess back then it wasn't that much of a popular choice to like start your own business um so I kind of wish that I went to do a business course but I guess I learned that working for this studio instead <laughs> um 
Where was I going with this? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I had this job for like two or three years. And in the meantime, I was also still starting up my business. So I started to, I made a website, I had a blog, I started like my social media channels. And while I was doing that, I was planning a lot of test shoots, like I was mentioning before. And from the test shoots, I was doing those for about a year. And then my first job was actually a book cover. So I used to get a lot of book cover requests when I started out. And I think that's because I had my work. I posted a lot of my work on DeviantArt and Flickr. And they kind of look through those websites for image licensing. And so about a year into me, like really starting my business, I got my first job making a book cover. And then it was like a slow progression from then up until the point where I quit my job. So like to put it in a timeline, I guess it would be I started my business and then I got a job. And then for about a year, I had a like my job for a year and then I got my first job in that year, like throughout that year. And then so the next two years that I was still working and having my business up until the second. Oh, my God, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> up until like the third year, recap? I was like finally starting to make enough that I could support myself. So I quit my job at three years. That totally didn't make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like confused myself. Um, yeah, so I would say like two, three years it took me to, I should have just said that in the first place. <laughs> Dan's just laughing at me, thanks. But yeah, um, I guess something else I could say with that question is that when I first started working as a photographer, my jobs were like really, really random. Like I remember, so the book cover was my first job and then I had a few other book covers as well. Um, I also did a few album covers for some bands. Um, but then on top of that, with actual photo shoots, I, I would shoot band photos. So I would shoot promo photos on location and then I would also shoot the bands live. I remember I got hired once, this is so weird, to shoot uh, toilet walls. <laughs> it was so random. <laughs> but I mean, money's money, right? When you're starting out, you kind of just need to book those jobs. Well, you got to explain that to people, right? Um, yeah, so toilet basically. Toilet walls is very <laughs> vague in what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I was getting into it. You mean, I believe the, I believe the proper title of, of, of that was high-end toilet cubicles yes high-end toilet cubicles i don't know if you can hear dan properly over there but um (laughs) but yeah so this company hired me that so this company that hired me makes toilet cubicles (laughs) and they needed photos of their work so i needed to go in and get a like a wide angle of the cubicles, like a kind of like <laughs> a, like a semi close up of one of the cubicles, and then like a real close up, so you can see like the texture of the <laughs> of the cubicle wall. And like it was so random because like I had to wake up super early, and Dan dropped me off at a pub, which is where they had just built these cubicles, and I was like. I don't know, like 17 or something. And I was like knocking on the door of the pub at like eight in the morning. And um, I had to explain to the guy that I was like hired to do this job. And he was like, oh, yeah, they called and they told us that you were coming. I was like, oh, cool. And then I spent the most awkward like half an hour with a tripod in the toilet just trying to get some cool shots of the wall. Uh, yeah, so I had really random jobs like that. And then I would also get really cool jobs like back in the beginning of my career for like labels to shoot lookbooks for. And um, I think I shot like a campaign early on as well, but mostly on location lookbooks. 
But yeah, so my jobs were super random at first. And then as you like progress, um, you continue getting inquiries for like really random jobs, but you also get inquiries for the jobs they actually want to do on like shooting toilet cubicles. So you slowly start accepting more of the work that you do want to do and then you don't have time to do the random jobs. So slowly those start getting filtered out until you're just doing what you want to do. Someone's asking if you're going to host a live stream. You should do it. No. He said no. <laughs> he said no. But um, I want to start filming more behind the scenes of my shoots, like vlog styles. And Dan's going to be coming along to a few of them. I have like three planned for this week. So you'll be seeing more of him in my vlogs, at least. And maybe sometime he'll come and say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm right here. You're just a voice, Dan. Um, yeah, I'd say it's like, um, like, I mean, it's not impossible to sustain yourself off photography straight away, uh, but it would require a lot of work. Um, uh, another thing that we got into as well was weddings for a while when I was starting out. I feel like that really helped me, um, sort of, oh, there he is. Uh, oh wait, this way. <laughs> that really helped me out a lot. I feel like these are too cold. There we go. I feel like there's like, because I'm saving the shadows so much, there's like a green tinge. That's better. Do they green? I will. But yeah, I, if you do end up getting a job, like, uh, while you're starting out your business, I totally recommend to get something similar to the field that you're in. Um, just be careful though, because I guess some companies, I was really lucky, but some companies probably wouldn't let you do your own work outside of their company. Um, so just make sure you keep an eye out for that, but otherwise go for it. No, but you. Yeah, but you. They might get you to sign a contract when you start working for them. Yeah, but at that time you're working full time for them. No one's gonna sign up for a part time job and sign anything that waits and being able to work anywhere else. I guess. Who doesn't do freelance on the side? <laughs> I guess, but like you never know. There's some people that could be like really strict about it. You don't want to get stuck working for a company that then you can't do your own business on the side with. Yeah. Uh, as long as it's not within the hours, you can do whatever you want with it. I guess so. You're on the clock. That's how it works. Unless you're a subcontractor, but even then, you still do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so my post... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my post-processing is... I don't know if you were here for the beginning of the stream, but I select all my photos through Photo Mechanic. So these are the selected photos. And let me just show you. These are all the deselects. There's like thousands. So we went through all of them. The An original amount of 300 photos that we went through. And then I ended up with these as my final favorites that I then open up in Lightroom and I edit them and then export them and they're done. So for these photos, cause they're a different style to everything else we shot, I'm just gonna reset and start again. So first things first is sharpening. Then I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights, contrast up. 
shutters down and I'm going to enable profile correction to get rid of some of that vignetting. And then I want to make this one super vibrant. Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> How did I edit the other photo? This is really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bring up the exposure so much, Jules. Um, but yeah, in short, these photos that I'm editing now are the final selected photos that will get exported and uploaded to Dropbox. Um, so for models, uh, I well, I guess I started a long time ago doing photography. So back in the day, uh, we used to use model. <laughs> I know I sound like an old person. We yeah, used to. <laughs> I used to use model mayhem. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, well, but you are old. You are old. yes, I am. So I'm pretty sure. I don't even know if that website exists anymore. Actually, we'll find out. yeah. Well, Let's have a look. Yeah, it's oh, still <laughs> it's still up. Oh my god. That's so bad. It wasn't this bad when I was using it. That's kind of dodge now. Yeah, but um, yeah. But yeah, I used to use Model Mayhem and I had an account there and I would just basically like sift through and find people that wanted to shoot with me. And that's how I had, that's how I yeah, put together a lot of my first test shoots. Um, I guess now, now there are well, at least for Australia, there is a Melbourne Creative Network and a Sydney Creative Network for people uh, who do fashion photography, who are stylists, who are makeup artists, who are models that are part of this Facebook group. And you can basically go on there and post what you want. So I'm looking for like a model for a test shoot. Here's like some examples of my work messaging me if you want to work together. So you could do that. Um, Otherwise, something I really wish I wasn't so scared of doing from the beginning is to just get in contact with modeling agencies because I was terrified to do that. And then I finally did it one day and I realized it's not so bad that agencies actually want you to shoot for them. Um, and basically what you do is you call up because the email that they have on their website is usually a general email that they ignore. So I wouldn't recommend emailing that. I would that's recommend. They, they ignore it. It's best for inquiries when you need a model. Yeah, when, when you don't want to. Yeah, when you're. Yeah, a yeah sorry. I, yeah. Dan Cedar, correct me. The email is answered. It's just it's not the right email. It's yeah, so if you it. email for like a free test shoot on the general email of the website, it will probably be ignored or they will take a really, really long time to get back to you because that email is mostly for clients that want to book a model for a job. So what I would recommend is to grab their phone number, call up and be like, hi, my name is Julia and I'm a fashion photographer from Sydney. I'd love to test with some of your models. Can I please get um, the best contact email for the manager of female models or for male models or for whoever you want? And then they'll usually be like, yep, the email is da 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 da. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you have to do. And then you just email them with your website and they'll send you through... Um, packages of girls who are available for the dates that you've said that you want to test with and yeah I put this off for years it was like the most terrifying thing for me ever and then when I finally did it I was like face palming wondering why I put it off for so long And then with directing, I don't really direct all that much and that's how I like to keep my models looking really natural. Um, if I find that someone like isn't really like flowing for me <laughs> like for my photos 
<laughs> Dan's just looking at me with this weird face. Um, I'll get them to like run around or skip or jump or flick their hair or lay down on the floor or just do something like really weird to like get them to shake off the, the weird feeling. That usually happens with um, models who are kind of starting out. Um, otherwise, I basically just told them that I want my photos to look really natural, that I want them to be relaxed, kind of tomboyish, like they're kind of bored and like hunched and like a broken doll. Like I give them all these uh, descriptions of the style of photo that I really like. And usually that works really well. And then the majority of directing that I do would be like um, to tell them to like, let's sit in this spot because the lighting is good or I like the background. And then in that sitting position, I'll kind of give them a general idea of what I want, like sit cross-legged or sit with your back here and your legs out this way or sit facing me or I'm going to get a close up. So do this. And within that, I just let them like move freely. So I'll tell them to just move around as much as they want. Um, yeah. And then like, we'll like change positions and I'll get them to stand somewhere. But yeah, within that main pose that I put them in, I let them sort of do whatever they want. And then the other important thing is that I always continue clicking my shutter, even if they're not posing. Cause I feel like that's when you get the real magic moments. Um, so many times a model will be like posing and it looks nice, but then I don't know, the wind will blow and they go to move their hair from their face and I'll click the shutter. And it ends up being my favorite photo of the set. So I never sort of, I never stop taking pictures. <laughs> Always keep going. Yeah, thanks for your link, Brittany. I want to check out your work as well when I finish the, the stream. Uh, Music Mafia, I'm not sure. What's your name and how, like, how do we know each other? <laughs> I really like these silhouette photos. I feel like I want to try and make the blue a little more intense. So I'm going to use a, what's it called? Graduated filter. <laughs> and I'm going to try and do that. So bring the exposure down, maybe. Oh, no, that's bad. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and, mm, photography is all about, um, you know, trying new things. And sometimes those things just don't work. <laughs> no, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I'll leave it as it is. That looks better. All right, and on to the last photos of the day. Did I reset these? No. As you can see, the sun's like totally dropped here and there's just no color left in anything now. Because this is the same white balance and settings that we were using for the photos back here, which is super orange. But yeah, and like the sun's still there. It's just that hazy. It just doesn't get through. Pump it up. Oh, cool. Did you email me about it? About, sorry, about the photos on the YouTube channel? I like, I read something and I assume that my eyes are screen recording and you guys know what I'm looking at. That's not how it works. <laughs> Oh, that'd be cool if there was like pink sand dunes somewhere. Somewhere in the world. I'll be Googling that later. Google. Uh, 
I was. I closed the window. <laughs> In winter, we don't need heaters because Dan exporting video literally works like a heater from his laptop. Yay! All right, done editing. Oh, these bushes. I don't know why it annoys me so much. I just, it looks so weird when it's cut off on the edge of the photo. A bit better. I don't know why that one still looks crooked to me. Because it is. Okay, that's better. Okay. All right, so now I finished the initial edit of everything and I like to go back and have a look at everything again because I feel like when you start editing, you look at things differently to when you're an hour into editing and you've sort of seen all the different lighting conditions and seen the photos and the lighting and the colors evolve as, the, as you're editing. So I like to just go back to the beginning and double check everything because I don't know, sometimes you're editing the last few photos of the day and by then you're like super refined in your color editing and stuff and then you go back to the first photo and to me, I can already see it in the thumbnail. It looks super green. I mean, it might just be because of the time of day. It's not that bad, I guess. I mean, that looks a bit better. It's like the smallest difference, but it makes a big difference. I feel like she's not in the center. That looks a bit, no. There? Why am I so pedantic? I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, you can like literally see. Whoa, look at this. Okay, so here the footprints are really defined in the photo but then in the next one they're all just like blurred out and that's the wind blowing the sand that's crazy that's so cool it's like i've turned the clarity down <laughs> no I might get rid of a few of her bruises on her legs. I think it's always super important to do stuff that you enjoy in photography. So that's good that you're doing that. I mean, I used to do the same thing when I was, well, I even still do it now. It's also like, even if you, when you get really busy as well, it's important to remember to shoot for yourself. Sort of, I don't know, I feel like shooting for yourself, you're the most creative and you have the least amount of boundaries. So I feel like you can create some really special things that way. And I feel like, um, I don't know, it's really important to do that. So you continue developing your style.
All right. I think I'm pretty happy with how all the photos look. Yeah, I was thinking of, I've got a photo shoot tomorrow in the afternoon and I was thinking when I get back, I want to, I want to do a live stream of me doing this same process again. Would you guys be interested in seeing that? It would be at the, pretty much the same time, 8 p.m. Australian time again tomorrow. But this time it'll be photos from a, like a personal fashion shoot, like there's no client or anything. It's just a shoot I'm putting together because I'm finally in Australia. <laughs> So I can shoot. But yeah, we can get into like a little bit more creative editing as well. Because it'll be just photos for me so I can do whatever I want. Yes, I'd love to check out your work, Monica. I'll do it after the after the stream. I feel like these are too pink. Or something. But yeah, thank you so much for your um for your lovely words about my work. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll be back. I think I'll be back tomorrow with another with another stream with some fashion photos. Well, that one's really bright. This one. I know. Sometimes when you edit a photo, like when you add the colors to it, it just doesn't. It doesn't look like it's not. <laughs> how do I say this? Like, I don't know, you just don't like it as much anymore. So even when I'm editing in Lightroom, I just, I get rid of photos that I had selected and thought would be a final selection, but I don't know, with like the colors, it just doesn't work anymore. Yay, we're done. All right, and now all I need to do is export the photos and get them uploaded to Dropbox. I think this is my favorite. <laughs> I love this one. Um, but yeah, do you guys have any more questions about anything? Because I think I'm going to end the stream now because I'm finished with the photos. But like I said, I'll be back again tomorrow at 8 p.m. Australian Standard Time. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Sydney Time. And I'll have a brand new fashion shoot to go with you guys, to go through with you guys. I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to check if there's any messages on Instagram. That's a really hard question. What's my favorite city that I've traveled to? <laughs> hmm. That's a really hard question. I mean, I guess I love different places for different reasons. And I know that's kind of <laughs> like driving around the and like getting to the point. But um, 
like I guess if I had to pick one, I would pick. I would pick. <laughs> I was hoping it would come to me. No, the first thing, like my gut, the first thing that pops into my mind is London. Like that's my favorite, and I think it might be because it was the first place that I traveled to overseas by myself, like as an adult with Dan, and um, it was just yeah, it was for work, but it was my first time traveling overseas. Um, and I don't know, it was just really magical. Like we bought the tickets the day before. And we spent that whole night packing. We didn't sleep. And then we woke up the next morning and drove to the airport and flew off to London. And it was just such a roller coaster. And we just got there. And I just remember every single day feeling nothing but happiness and excitement. It was just like the best two weeks ever. Um, so yeah, maybe it's just it's got sentimental value for me because of the circumstances that I was there. But I honestly loved every single place that I've been to and everything has its own special thing about it. But yeah, to answer your question and to get to the point, I'm going to say London. <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you so, so much guys for joining in and for talking to me and not letting me just sit here and edit awkwardly alone in silence on my live stream. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully you can tune in again and we can go through this process again and with some different photos. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Bye.